All right, so when I was growing up, I had this book, in fact, I still have it, The Spider-Man Ultimate Guide. This book is actually responsible for a lot of the things I knew about these comic book characters before the movies even came out. And in this book are these pages on the characters Cloak and Dagger. And something about them really spoke to me. They're just such an epitome of yin and yang, light and dark. They're polar opposites, and yet they rely on each other. I just always loved that concept, so when I heard they were getting their own live-action TV show set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I was all over it. So now that season one has wrapped, let's talk about it with some spoilers. You've been warned. Cloak and Dagger, season one. So like I said, season one of Cloak and Dagger on Freeform just wrapped up. It's a live action TV show based on the characters, supposedly set in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I mean, at this point, I've kind of shrugged that off since, you know, they don't affect the movies at all. I never really expected them to, if I'm being honest, but you know, no one evaporates into dust at the end of the season or something. Maybe this whole season takes place before Infinity War, but point is, it doesn't matter. Cloak and Dagger takes place down in Narlins, Louisiana. Focuses on two teens, Tandy Bowen and Tyrone Johnson. Both of them suffered a tragic event when they were younger due to this big rocks on oil rig explosion that unleashed a burst of energy and unbeknownst to the kids, it gave them powers. So now when they're teens, a series of events leads them to meet each other again, which triggers their powers and our story of Cloak and Dagger begins. Tyrone Johnson, AKA Cloak, is played by Aubrey Joseph. He goes to a private religious school. He plays basketball. He mourns for his older brother, Billy, who was shot by a cop, supposedly, on the day of the explosion. With his new powers, he can see people's greatest fears upon contact. And whenever he has a cloak on, he can teleport using an energy called Dark Force, which he actually have seen in a couple other Marvel TV shows, including Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Agent Carter. So while Tyrone can harness the power of the dark, Tandy can harness the power of light. Tandy Bowen, aka Dagger, is played by Olivia Holt. She lost her father in a car crash on the day of the explosion. So now, as a teen, she's kind of a con artist, a femme fatale, even after acquiring her new powers, which allow her to see people's greatest hopes upon contact. And when she's in danger, she can produce actual daggers of light, which is really cool. And when the show was starting off, I was like, all right, I want to see some really cool cloak and dagger action. But as I suspected, the first few episodes were pretty slow. I suspected they would be because a lot of these Marvel TV shows start off that way. You don't get dessert right out the gate. We gotta set up the characters. So yeah, it is slow, but it's the good kind of slow because the character setup I thought was really good. You end up sympathizing with both Tyrone and Tandy in their respective worlds. When Tyrone and Tandy meet, they learn that yeah, fate is bringing them together. They're discovering their powers. They're testing their limits. That's like the first half of the season. Another important character in the show is Emma Lahana as Detective Bridget O'Reilly. She works for the New Orleans PD. And she's important because she helps Tyrone and Tandy investigate into the case of what happened that fateful day eight years ago with the rock song oil rig explosion and a cop supposedly killing a guy. If I may sidetrack here for a bit though, I do like the fact that Roxxon finally has a dominant role. For those of you who don't know, Roxxon has been around the Marvel Cinematic Universe since the very beginning, but it's always kind of been in the background as like an easter egg, but we always knew it was kind of a shady corporation. Now we get to see one of the shady things they've done. They were drilling for oil supposedly, but we learn later that they were actually drilling for some other substance that was more powerful, but toxic to humans. It had like different effects on people. It gave Tyrone and Tandy their powers, but for most people it just turned them into ravenous, raging people that would later be dubbed terrors. For me, and I'm sure for a lot of other people, the show really picked up at episode 7, Lotus Eaters. Tyrone and Tandy both go inside the head of Ivan Hess, who was there on the rig of the day of the explosion. It turns out he was a really close friend of Tandy's father, Nathan, so he knows a lot about what went down that day. So Ivan is sitting there in this state of catatonia, and Tyrone and Tandy figure out that they could probably cure him if they go in his head and figure out what's going on in there. So they go inside, and and we actually get to see some cool cloak and dagger action because they're there on the rig fighting these terrors and daggers throwing your daggers and cloak is teleporting and it's like oh my god it took seven episodes but we're finally here and it was badass to see and from there to the rest of the season it's all really exciting the eighth episode ghost stories we get to see cloak actually use fear to get a confession out of connor's the cop who murdered his brother he's wearing the cloak that his brother billy made and he's teleporting and he looks like a freaking phantasm it's really cool it reminded me of batman's first action scene in batman begins where, you know, he's using fear and no one really sees him and that one guy's like, where are you? And he appears behind him, he's like, here. I felt like Cloak was gonna do something like that in this scene. It was awesome. But really, let's just talk about the finale. See, the show taking place in New Orleans, which is a city with a lot of tradition and folklore about Native Americans and slavery back in the day. Legends built up over time about a divine pairing that would save the city. So now in modern day, it looks like Tyrone and Tandy are that divine pairing that's gonna save the city from this big chemical outbreak that Roxxon is behind. That's gonna turn people into terrors. So Tyrone and Tandy had to go over there to the source and 
put a stop to it. And this is where the spoilers come in because there are a few badass things that happen towards the end of this episode. First off, Connor shows up and Tyrone is all like, I'm not afraid of you anymore but you should be very afraid. They teleport to the roof of this building, and it looks like Connors is gonna give up, but he tries to pull a fast one on him, and then all of a sudden, this dark energy just comes out of Cloak, and Connors is like, what the hell is going on? And then Cloak just absorbs Connors, just like, Aah! And I was like, holy shit, that's right. Cloak can absorb people into this dark void, like a dark dimension or something. So that's what happened. That was like a jaw drop moment for me. I was like, Oh, that just happened. So Tyron and Tandy, they go inside, all this light and dark energy is around, and Tandy's like, hold my hand, we'll show these assholes a divine pairing. And this is just awesome, because all this energy's going around, Olivia Holt's cover of Come Sail Away by Styx is playing in the background. I like how throughout the entire episode, they decide to go with a classic rock song to recur in the background. So all this energy is swirling around them, and then they just unleash it into the sky, and they have saved the city of New Orleans from another catastrophe. They are the divine pairing. I just think that's really cool. The big cliffhanger at the end that's gonna lead into the story arc in season two is O'Reilly. Because at one point, Connors goes up to O'Reilly. He's like, you know what? I don't need you in the equation anymore. And he shoots her. And you see that little outbreak of energy that comes from that Roxxon pipe. And so she falls. And he's like, you should have stayed in New York, bitch. And then he just kicks her into the water. And I was like, there it is. There's the origin story, because later on she emerges from the water, she's got glowing eyes, and there was chatter on Twitter around Comic-Con that was like, oh yeah, she's gonna become the character Mayhem. There's already a season two announcement saying, yeah, season two will be Mayhem. So that's like the big thing that season two is gonna be about, for which I am genuinely excited. It's coming out in spring, which is earlier than when this season started, which makes me even more excited. That just means we're getting it sooner. There are references in this show to other things in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, mostly TV shows. Like one of the biggest ones is Detective O'Reilly is originally from Harlem. She used to work for the NYPD there. And at one point she was like, have I ever told you about my friend Misty? And I was like, oh, she's talking about Misty Knight. Apparently, I haven't watched Luke Cage season two yet, but apparently I heard there was a point where someone was like, oh yeah, O'Reilly is in New Orleans now. And of course that moment in the finale where Scarborough was straight up like, we gotta keep up with the Joneses and the Starks and the Rands. I was like, there's two big references right there. One more thing I really like about the show is the music. They've actually released a soundtrack album and a score album. The soundtrack actually has some really good songs on there. Run Wild is probably my favorite, but Trigger leave the light on, arise. It's pretty much basic TV show alt-rock, which to me marks the difference between a TV show and a movie, music-wise, is that for a big dramatic moment, a TV show will go with a song, whereas in a movie, a big dramatic moment would use a score. I mean, the score in this show is done by Mark Isham, and it's really not prominent at all. It's all about the soundtrack. I mean, it's good songs, but it's very, it's very TV showy, you know what I mean? Like, aside from Game of Thrones, no TV show has really grabbed me with its score because I'd rather go with some pop song instead for a big dramatic moment. But the flip side of that is the songs are really good. They're good jams. So to bring this video to a close, I really love Cloak and Dagger season one. I thought it was great. I love the characters. Cloak and Dagger, they have great chemistry together. They haven't formed a romantic relationship yet. They're known for having one in the comics. But right now, Tyrone actually has a girlfriend, Evita, who's a nice girl and I like her. But I just know at some point, they're gonna have to break up because he and Tandy are gonna have to form a romantic relationship because that's just inevitable because they're cloak and dagger. Maybe Evita is gonna become a villain. I'm thinking that because there was that moment where Tandy tried to see her hopes, but then Evita just rejected her out. She was like the only person who was able to do that. I was like, whoa, what happened there? I think that's actually gonna be explored later next season. I, I have a hunch. I want it to be explored anyways because I'm really intrigued by that. I have a feeling season two is gonna be a lot cooler than season one. That's usually how it is to me. In both the cases of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Daredevil, season two was a lot cooler than season one. So I got a good feeling season two of Cloak and Dagger is going to be awesome. But as it stands for season one, it's really cool. It's worth a 10 hour binge watch on Hulu. The first half of the season is kind of a slow burn, but the second half is great payoff for that because you're attached to the characters at that point and you get to see some awesome Cloak and Dagger action with the teleporting and the throwing daggers. What can I say? I'm completely satisfied. So Cloak and Dagger season one, have you watched it? What was your favorite episode? And what are your theories and predictions for season two? Whatever you think, go ahead and leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe.